Hammerhelm, a world where dwarves have risen to the surface to create their first sun-graced town. Fraught with danger from the outskirts, these plucky adventurers try to make a new home for themselves, and fortunately they have you, a world-class town planner come Monster Slayer, to back them up. But will it be enough? Let's see. Hammerhelm seeks to blend town building with a third-person adventure game, and I have to admit it does this rather well. The worlds of construction and combat are one and the same. You can personally navigate and explore your own creation, and then feel anguished as your own farms are ravaged by sentient scarecrows that you yourself placed there. It makes for an immersive game, apart from some of the dungeons which exist in separate instances, and they end up feeling somewhat detached from the rest of the world. Nevertheless, when you're surveying the town down by the storehouse and a random rat starts wailing on you as you're engrossed with the building schematics, you'll soon be reminded how connected different parts of this world are. Building new structures is pretty simple. Decide where to place them and watch your fellow townsfolk get to work. A few repeated bashes on the same spot of one specific wall will soon knock up any building, and there's a huge range to choose from. A clear progression takes you through basic fare such as housing and weaponry into the more exotic fare of potions and magic. The functions of each building are logical as well. For the longest time I wondered why my underlings' homes were outfitted with translucent blue mirages for beds, but then later I had an epiphany. Carpenters make furniture. I threw one up quick and before I knew it my servants were living in near luxury. Not so much for me, however, as it seems I need to choose my own furniture. And then when I tried that, I wasn't entirely clued up on how your common man uses one of these strange bed contraptions. But I gave him my best shot. There's a few niggles here and there. The building screen has to be navigated with WASD instead of mouse movements. And the full list of materials at the bottom of the screen is a bit overwhelming when you're excited to have just discovered a stone. But honestly, the building side of the game felt very smooth and very relaxing. You've got your fellow townspeople there as well to keep you company, and more importantly to chop down trees and stones so that you don't have to. I really appreciate this to be honest, as far too many survival-esque games have me still farming the most basic of materials until the end game, so kudos for that. Aside from this, your kinsmen also act as quest givers, along with a few others. And these are kind of a mixed bag. Probably a bit too repetitive for my tastes, but I guess that comes with the territory. There's some variety in them at least, and the game's tutorial does a very good job of taking you through each portion of the game, through opening quests, and you never really feel lost about what you can and can't do in the game. Pretty quickly, our humble town gets threatened, and judging by the quick reaction times and eagerness to assist of our fellow dwarves, it's all on us to keep the town secure. Combat is surprisingly varied. We have power attacks that simply feel great to perform. Dash attacks that hilariously knock over enemies. Blocking and dodging of enemy attacks in between our own, and the promise of magic coming later up in the tech tree. That's a lot more meat than I was expecting, but unfortunately it's pulled down a bit by the enemies I face being a bit, well, tactically inept. Spellcasters seem to take a comically long time to cast their spells, or at least to cancel their spells once it's missed. And more importantly, it seems that the monsters were expecting turn-based combat in this real-time action game, as they patiently wait for their turn, whilst their nearest and dearest get butchered before their eyes. Combine this with dodge just being straight up too good, and the challenge is missing from combat, which is a shame. I should briefly mention the graphics as well, even though I'm sure you've got a feel for them by now. You'll either love or hate this style, and personally for me, I think it's awesome. Graphically, and well, gameplay wise as well, everything is very cohesive, everything feels like it belongs in the same world. Okay, the enemies can sometimes clip through walls a bit, but I can look past that with gorgeous scenery like this. And look at the destruction of said gorgeous scenery beautiful in its own right. You can customise your characters too, but you won't feel the effect of that too much as you're always looking at their backside. 
meaning your choice of armor is going to have more of an impact than, say, your beard color. Also, female dwarves are not allowed to customize their beards, or have beards in any way, shape, or form. I find this very disappointing. For me, this game most strongly feels like it's one of growth, development, and personalization. There is this overriding sense of progress as your town grows larger, as new people join. You get to pick your dwarf's name, you get to name the town, you get to place every building, you even get to decide who can join your settlement, without having to break the news to Steri that his stunning combination of being both claustrophobic and lazy just doesn't quite make the cut. As you walk around town, it really feels like it's yours, and seeing the peasants collecting wood for you, or standing eerily outside their homes at night, fills you with pride knowing that you made that happen. The music feeds into this as well, as it always seems to be playing the backdrop to a tranquil town builder, rather than the battle theme of a great conflict. Personally, I like it that way. And I even end up caring more about picking five flowers so that Conlena can have a pretty flower garden and feel happier about herself than I do about my own level ups that improve my combat ability but I guess that's just about what I view the main portion of this game to be. But you know what? With a leader who thinks like that, I think these dwarves are going to do just fine. So there you have it. A completely conclusionless review. Um, this game's pretty good. Look, if you're here for epic combat, then look elsewhere. However, if you want a relaxing town builder with some variety thrown in and the graphic style appeals to you, then you'll almost certainly enjoy taking it easy with Hammer Helm. There we go, now the review is all professional and everything. If you'd like to see more of Hammer Helm, then I have another video for you. It's my first 90 minutes with the game, completely uncut, so you can really get a feel for exactly what the new player experience is like. It's in a Let's Play format with some commentary, it's what most of my videos are. Like this one right here, textbook advertising. Hopefully you'll join me for either of these, and I shall see you then.